Hey there fellow travelers, Mark here with Walter's World and today we're in Arequipa, Peru with what you should know before you visit Peru. Now, I'm filming this here in Arequipa because I want you to know when you come to Peru, it's more than just flying into Lima and then going to Cusco to see Machu Picchu. This country has so much to see from the Amazon rainforest in the north to the deserts to the mountains here in Arequipa to Lima, the capital, which is a fun place to go. And of course, Cusco, the home of the Incas with Machu Picchu and stuff like that. And one of the crazy things about Peru is the Incas, they only were around for a couple hundred years. There's so many more pre-Columbian civilizations that were here that you can see their temples and you can see their pyramids and you can see their stuff here that is really cool. So I want you to know that, that it's not just coming to Peru for the Incas. There's so much more to that. But anyway, let's get to what you probably want to know when you're here. First things first, money. What's the money that you're here? You will use the sol or soles in, in the plural. You'll see some people call it the nuevo sol. Um, but just call it just call it sol that's fine the sol is it comes in bills and coins um now in terms of getting your money when you're here you're gonna see a lot of people exchanging money in the street and actually in lima you'll see guys in kind of maroon jackets out front of the banks that will exchange locals a lot of time will use that to exchange money that's okay but there are atms all around and the atms put out dollars and soles and you can choose which one you want because some places will accept dollars and soles now the thing is when when you get the money out when you are using the atms they do charge you know eight fifteen or eighteen soles so like right now that's about i don't know five bucks to take out any kind of money and the thing is when you take out money soles they put a limit on how much you can take out when i tried to take out money i could only take out 400 soles at a time now i could take out money multiple times but it's 400 soles and every time i have to pay an extra 15 to take money out so for every 100 bucks basically 100 bucks you take out you got to pay five bucks to get it out dang that gets kind of a bit tough so that's why people sometimes exchange on the street because they can do more they can get more money exchanged so there is that um in terms of money in terms of tipping because that's where some of the money comes in usually what you want to do is you want to tip in soles okay instead of dollars you can't tip in dollars it's okay but it usually works better with the soles just so you know and in terms of tipping you usually tip about 10 percent at a restaurant and if you've got guides uh like for an hour to three hour guide you're gonna pay you know basically from 10 to 20 um uh, 10 to 15 soles for for like two hours something like that if you go for like a full day one it's like 20 soles things like that but we have a whole video on tipping here that really explains it and you really should know that if you're going to hike the Inca Trail oh also if you're going to hike the Inca Trail if you're going to do it in the summer in the U.S. like June July August you really need to book four or five six months in advance because they really book out if you're coming in December and stuff like that when I hiked it it wasn't that hard to get a spot but in the summer it can be really packed okay now in terms of languages what do you need to speak when you are here Look, in Peru, Spanish is official language, also Quechua is another official language. And when you are here, what you need to know is not a lot of people do speak English. Now, in the tourism industry, a lot of people will speak English, so you will be okay, your tour guides and stuff like that. But you really need to know is you do need to know some Spanish when you come here. It really does make life a lot easier when you're here. And even if you don't, the people are really friendly, you'll figure it out. You know, my wife was ordering drinks at the uh, at the market here in Arequipa, and she doesn't speak that much Spanish, but it was really sweet to see her and this old lady working together at it and the people will work with you so they can understand so it's not a really big problem but it does make a big difference if you know some Spanish okay now next thing I want to talk about is safety overall I find Peru to be relatively safe especially for South America I mean compared to like a Brazil or something like that I feel extremely safe when I am here yes there are the pickup pockets and there are some of these other things you know some snatches and stuff like that but overall it's not too bad so your safety wise in terms of stuff you're not gonna be you're gonna be okay but the real dangers you have there's two real dangers you do have when you come here notice I'm wearing this totally sexy hat right well that's because the Sun you're up here in a high altitude in places like Arequipa and Cusco you're a lot higher up so the UV rays are a lot stronger when you are here you're closer up here and it's really easy to get burned in Lima which is cloudy like nine months out of the year you will still get sunburn there because the Sun is so strong here so make sure you do have a hat or you do wear sunblock when you are here because it does make a big difference that's one of the dangers the other danger is altitude sickness if you're coming to Arequipa or especially Cusco and Machu Picchu and your body's not used to that so you might get dizzy you 
you might get headaches, vomiting. It's really, really bad. And people sometimes end up in the hospital. So if you're having those issues, go to a pharmacy, ask them, tell you have mal de altura, which is like sickness of the height, you know, high, you know, altitude sickness. So be really careful with it because I do know people that end up in the hospital and some of the hotels will actually sell you like canisters of oxygen to help you breathe. And so will the hospitals if you're having problems. So do be careful with that. And if you're a heavy guy like me, you'll really feel the difference in the thinner air up here. So it can be kind of dangerous. So that's one thing I would say is to be careful with, okay? Another kind of negative thing you might want to know about before you come are the toilets because maybe you have some tummy troubles when you are here. It could be from the altitude sickness and stuff like that. And what you need to know is the, to the, the toilets here don't really accept toilet paper. So you're going to put your toilet paper in the trash can next to, um, next to the toilet. And if you've got tummy trouble and you're you know, doing the bathroom and you got to throw it in there, it can be kind of gross. So I'll just give you the heads up on that one that... Just be ready. TP goes in the trash, not in the toilet. The pipes can't handle it very well, okay? Now, another thing I wanna talk about is the food when you are here. Look, Peru has got some amazing food. I mean, I understand now that I've been here for a few weeks again, is I understand why I've been seeing Peruvian restaurants pop up in London and New York and Chicago and around the world because the food here is fantastic. And yes, they do have crazy food you might wanna try like hui or guinea pig. Yes, guinea pig. First time I had it, it came out like spread eagle style. I had it today, it was chopped up and fried. It was pretty good actually. Alpaca, my kids loved alpaca steaks. Literally they both ate a whole steak, a five-year-old ate a whole steak and then wanted more. But there's other good foods when you are here. Ceviche, which is like you know, shellfish and fish and shrimp um, it with a, in a lime kind of in lime juice and some and some tomatoes and some chili peppers and some onions in there. It's like the typical starter here. It is really, really good. You will really enjoy that. Uh, the meats here are really good too. If you want to have lomo saltado, salteado, which is like um, beef cooked in like soy sauce with some rice and potatoes, it's really fantastic. Uh, we've had that a couple times when we've been here. Uh, what are some other good things we had? Aji de gallina, which is like shredded chicken in a cream sauce with this aji pepper in it. Oh, so good. Um, fish is really good here if you're near the coast. I mean, there's a lot of great food you can have when you are here. But the thing is, the things that are most famous from here, there's the Pisco Sour, which is a, the local kind of cocktail you want to have, and Inca Cola, which is a soda that's yellow. It looks like pee, but it tastes like bubble gum and Sprite mixed together. And my kids, like my youngest, didn't want to try it at first, but then once he did, he's had it every single meal because he loves it so much. So that's kind of cool. Now, I guess there is one more health thing I should should tell you about if you are coming here with the drinks and the food the water you cannot drink the water here now next thing I want to talk about is how do you get around Peru I mean it's just, there's mountains and, and deserts and, and rainforests and all this stuff how do you get around well most of the time you're gonna fly you're gonna fly from Lima to Cusco or Lima to Arequipa or Arequipa to Cusco or you're gonna fly up to the north you're gonna fly and all the flights from Lima are around an hour long so it's really easy to go Latam which is Lan Chile and Tom Airlines or Lan and Tom got together to make Latam, funny like that. They fly all over, Peruvian airlines go, go all over, so you are okay. And what's cool for tourists is that there's tons of travel agencies here that will help you arrange your trips if you want to go see Machu Picchu, if you want to go hiking and go see the, the, the canyons here by Arequipa or go hike the volcanoes. There's tons and tons of tourist agencies here and they have guides and all kinds of stuff like that to help you out. I mean, they've really done a good job of getting the, the tourism industry here working great. I mean, it's mining number one for, for here and tourism is number two for their economy and they know that and they do a really great job of it so when you come here you'll see the comfort you'll see the shops you'll see the people and how warm they are and how wonderful the Peruvians are and you'll really love that and that really goes in their tourism when you are here because the people are fantastic and that goes into the travel agencies and the guides and stuff like that and the pride they have in their country oh man I can't tell you how many times I've seen the guides and they just get going about their country and stuff like that and you're just like yes this is the kind of guides I love you will have that here in Peru because the people are awesome but anyway let's get back to the transport stuff. Now, when you're not flying, you will be taking buses to go around the places and the roads can be a bit bumpy and they can be a bit uncomfortable. And if you're going to be going from Cusco to Puno to go to Lake Titicaca, that bus ride, it's a long, uncomfortable bus ride. And I'm going to tell you right now, in Peru, there's different levels of services and buses and there's different levels of services and tours and stuff like that. And you get what you pay for. If you want comfort, you got to pay for it. If you want bare bones, hey, you don't have to pay much for it. But just know that you get what you pay for it. And those buses, it makes a big difference on your back and your butt because they could be really, really long rides, okay? Now, if you're transporting yourself inside cities, look, 
it seems like everybody has an uncle or a buddy or they're doing it themselves that they drive they're a taxi driver and stuff like that and when you take taxis what you're gonna do is you're gonna negotiate the price of where you want to go before you get in so you already got the price then so you don't have to tip them the taxi drivers because look we've already discussed the price it's already included let's go if you're not sure what to do have your hotel get you a taxi for you and they can set it up for you no big deal also you'll see a lot of buses going around a lot of mini buses going around private mini buses all kinds of things like that if you speak Spanish it's not really a big deal it's pretty simple to do if you don't speak Spanish you you'd probably be okay too but do be careful make sure you pay attention when you are doing those things okay also when you are here traffic is insane everywhere here in Arequipa Lima wherever traffic is really crazy and they're not gonna stop for you if you're crossing the street so you got to make sure you're really paying attention especially if you got little kids because it can be a little dangerous okay next you might ask well mark when should we go there well the dry season is May to October and the really high peak season for tourism is July and August so that's why I said if you're gonna go to the Inca Trail and you want to hike it if you're gonna go in July or August you might have to book four or five or six months in advance to Gary and see your spot because they do fill up okay because that's the peak season and then you have the rainy season which is November through March and the thing is rainy season kind of starts at different times we're here in December and we're not having really any rain at all and so the rainy season is it kind of sometimes a misnomer but the thing is when it is the place that have the rainy season when it rains it does rain I remember hiking the Inca Trail you know the first time I did it and literally they're like hey six o'clock it's gonna rain every day and the four days of the hike every day at six o'clock on clockwork downpour and so the thing is even if you're gonna be you know it's like oh it's the dry season I don't need a jacket do bring a jacket just in case or a poncho and yes you can get ponchos here no problem okay made out of alpaca or whatever just know that the seasons April through October dry, dry season and November through March is the wet season and November and March is not so wet so yeah, I wouldn't worry too much about that end of December January that's when it really kicks in okay now if you're like me you're coming with an iPad and a, a, a camera and a phone and stuff like that and you want to know what electricity what plug do I need to bring well most of the hotels actually have both a European plug and a US plug together so there's like this straight line and a dot together and it's really easy to use so it's okay the voltage though is 220 okay so you know that but if you have you know your converter that's on your phone or your laptop you'll be fine because it's already in there so you do know that so whatever plug you have a European plug or a US plug they will work Brazilian plugs those don't work here okay and UK plugs they don't work here either you just have to have the adapter then you can plug it in you'll be okay and the last thing I have for you is what should you wear when you're here look it never gets like super cold when you're here and it can get very warm when you are here but what I want to say is look and see obviously the forecast before you go but the thing I will recommend for you to bring is a good pair of walking shoes or hiking boots especially you're gonna do an Inca trail kind of thing we're gonna hike in the, the the canyons here by Arequipa or hike a volcano or stuff like that you need good sturdy footwear when you are here and make sure yes you do bring a hat or you buy a hat when you are here because the Sun is pretty bad so those are only two like fashion advice I do have for you a hat and some good shoes anyway I hope this helped you know a little bit more about what you should know before you come to Peru it is a wonderful place the people are fantastic the food is great there's so many great sites that aren't just Inca sites but there is the Machu Picchu but there's there's other fantastic places to see out here so do go explore this country because it is so fantastic all the echo biodiversity here too oh it is really cool and yes you can take home an alpaca sweater and maybe eat some guinea pig on the way <laughs> anyway have a great time here in Peru I'll say bye from Arequipa if you want to learn more 10 things that'll shock you about Peru five tips for getting more of, out of visiting Arequipa check us out on our website at waltersworld.com we're also on Twitter Facebook Instagram YouTube obviously we really appreciate your likes and subscriptions and we hope you have a great time here in Arequipa and in Peru in general and I know you will because this place is fantastic bye from Peru